Hello folks, it's Professor Fiore, and today I've got something interesting for you. Something that's going to bring together a bunch of things we've been talking about with op amps. Hopefully we'll have a little fun with this, and what I'm talking about is... Guitar Fuzz! How to make a fuzz box for a guitar. Now then, the circuit that I've got up here is very similar, not identical, but very similar to the classic MXR Distortion Plus stomp box. I remember way back when a buddy of mine had one of these things, had a little problem with it. I took it apart, looked at the schematic. Um, I had to laugh a little bit about what was in it. The first thing that caught my eye was the fact that it was using a 741. Not exactly a low noise op amp. Be that as it may, my buddy enjoyed it. So this little device runs on a 9-volt battery, and it has, besides the uh, bypass foot switch, it has two knobs on it for control. One is a volume control, the other is a distortion control. Now, I have not drawn the uh, volume control on here, which is really just a pot that sits back here, and you just tap off a percentage of it. Um, this is, however, the pot for the distortion. So let's just walk through this and see what we have. So the first thing you know you would probably notice is the inputs coming in on a plus input. And you know, we have sort of a standard series parallel non-inverting feedback configuration, but it is biased for a single polarity power supply because we're only operating on a single nine volt battery. So the negative power supply terminal goes to ground, the positive power supply terminal goes over to the battery. Now, of course, if you've watched the video on single supply biasing, you understand that we have to add some capacitors and some way of sort of fooling the op amp into thinking that it's actually using this full swing. You can't just ground the power supply and have, um, you know, zero volts DC coming in on the plus input. That's not, that's not going to work. Um, what you're going to wind up with is sort of an amplifier or rectifier if you try to do something like that. So what we have are input and output capacitors to block the DC, right? So your guitar is back here, and of course this goes off to your amplifier on this end. So we don't want DC out there. And then we have to make sure that the DC gain of the circuit is 1. That's what CI is over here to do. This opens up, right? Of course your gain is RF over RI plus 1. So at DC, this opens up, and you've basically got RF over infinity, plus 1, uh, which is going to be 1, right? So you have a DC gain of 1, basically, all right? Now, to get the DC value that we need for bias, we throw in a couple of 1 meg resistors over here. That splits the 9 volts in half, so I get 4.5 volts here. The impedance into the op amp is high enough that we're going to have minimal loading effect. So we'll have 4.5 volts here. We should get 4.5 volts DC at the minus input and 4.5 volts DC at the output at pin 6, right? Now, the actual real circuit has a bypass on the power supply to reduce power supply noise. Um, if you're not familiar, that is in the single supply, bi uh, single supply biasing video that I did um, prior. So you might want to take a look at that. I didn't include it here just to kind of keep things a little bit more clear, a little bit less um, cluttered, so we could focus in on some of the interesting new stuff. In any case, um, we can do a real quick DC analysis here and see what we get. Okay, so if I come out, let's say here, we can see there's 4.5 volts and a little change. Come out to the uh, divider over here, we're getting 4.46. Come out to pin 2. And I, same thing, we're getting roughly 4. Point, you know, 4.5 thereabouts. So the DC is set up appropriately. Now, what I've done is I've just thrown in a 500 hertz, 400 millivolt peak sine wave just to see what the heck happens here. So the amount of distortion that we get is controlled by this pot. Basically, the larger the value of this pot, the smaller the gain. You know, and this is all, all in, so to speak. When the wiper arm's down here, you get a full one meg. So your gain is one meg over a little over a meg, 
plus one. You get a gain of two. Not much gain. Then you crank it the other way. This thing basically shorts out, and all you have is a 4.7K. So you got one peg over 4.7K plus one. All right. So now we're looking at a gain of a couple hundred. A pretty sizable gain. You know, you're looking like, you know, 46 plus dB for something like that. So that's, you know, majorly as it were. Um, so we set up the pot over here at a certain percentage. I've just set this up for 75%. So we're going to get some of the pot, but not all of the pot. Okay. Um, we have a pair of diodes out here that are going to clip the output at roughly 0.7 volts. R2 serves as a current limiter. So, you know, I don't want to just put these two back-to-back -back diodes, or excuse me, parallel diodes, right at the output. We're going to send this thing into hard saturation. It's going to be dumping as much current as it can. So R2 limits that. C1 actually reacts with uh, R2 over here and creates a lag network that's centered around 16 kilohertz. So, you know, at the upper edge of human hearing. All right, so let's give this a transient whirl and see what we get out of here. Okay, bring this over. Open it up. Now, all right, so the green is our 400 millivolt input sine wave. And you can see the red over here, right? That is V load. This clearly is distorted. And you can see that we're not even getting 600 millivolts out of this, you know, for, with the diodes that I'm using. So they're starting to turn on and, you know, refusing to, to produce a large output signal, right? So we're getting, you can see just by the, the uh, slope here, just how much gain we have, right? I mean, without the diodes, this thing would be going up, 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 you know, way up there. So we're just sort of sawing off the top of this. Now, this is something that under normal circumstances you would never want to do, right? But, you know, this is an aesthetic thing. We like the sound of a fuzz guitar, a distorted guitar. You know, that is sort of the essence of rock. So, yeah, let's do it. You know, originally this was done, you know, way back when. This was the amplifiers themselves overloading. Um, but, of course, that required a very loud amplifier. So this way you can just get the stomp box and uh, you know have distortion at the low level feed this into the amplifier and you know you're not going to blast out your ears you're not going to blast out your neighbors so let's see what happens if we uh, change the pot around here so i'm going to bring this down right so that means the wiper arm is going to come down here And you can see this is not as bad, right? So basically by doing this, I bring the wiper arm down, I have more resistance, the gain goes down. So the amount of clipping that we have, it's still clipping, right? But it's not as extreme, all right? And obviously if we go the other way, you know, let's take this and bring it up to let's say 90%. So now we have very little total resistance. I only have 100K for this we're going to get a bit more. All right, so you can see how that top is there starting to flatten out, all right, compared to the first one, all right? And if you just crank it all the way, you know, this these edges are going to get harder, right? They're going to get uh, more sort of abrupt and sudden. So let's just go all the way, right? So now the pot is basically shorted, and all we have is the 4.7K sitting in here. This is the like total metal grunge extreme. We basically have a square wave. All right, that's what we're looking at. So when you get these sharp corners, what you're really saying is lots of high frequencies, lots of overtones, you know, harmonics. That's what you're looking at. All right. Okay. Fine. Get rid of that. So. You know, it's a relatively simple circuit for the most part. Operates on a single 9-volt battery. You know, there are a lot of variations on the theme here. You know, fuzz boxes have been built with discrete, you know, JFET stages and discrete uh, bipolar stages, things like that, op amps, so on and so forth. All right, there's a lot of options. But this is, you know, this is a, a, a popular uh, example of, of the type. All right, so... Um, 
are there things we can do to to uh, modify this, to alter this, to maybe make it a little bit better or at least a little bit different? You know, better in this case is very much a subjective term. What's better? I mean, we're distorting the living heck out of the signal, right? So for high fi we would never do that. But, you know, this is all aesthetics, right? It's what you like. There is no right and wrong. You know, chocolate isn't better than strawberry, isn't better than vanilla, isn't better than chocolate. So it's your personal taste, right? What do you like? So there are things we can do to change it. There are some things we can do that might, for the vast majority of people, say that's better. For example, we could probably use a lower noise op amp here. Um, there are a lot of op amps that uh, have better noise characteristics than a 741. Um, you know, we wouldn't necessarily look for a low distortion op amp. I mean, we're trying to produce distortion, right? We don't necessarily need a super high speed amplifier. This is strictly audio. So, uh, you know, top limit, 20 kilohertz. That's all really all we're talking about. Um, but maybe there are some other things we can do as far as filtering and uh, the distortion mechanism itself. Okay. Now, uh, when was it? Late 80s, I think. I, I uh, had designed a little personal amplifier that you'd plug your guitar in and uh, plug a pair of headphones in, right? So like a little personal, um, quiet practice kind of amplifier. And it had a distortion part to it. It had equalization and so forth. It was called the Pocket Rocket. It was featured um, in an issue of Electronic Musician back in the day, right? Um, and I went about the distortion a little bit differently than this. I still used diodes to clip, but I wanted to soften it. I didn't want it to have that really hard, edgy kind of quality to it. I wanted a little bit softer distortion and a little bit of lower noise. So what I did is I used a lower noise op amp that was um, still relatively inexpensive. I didn't go too far with that. Uh, and I altered around this section out here. Okay. Um, at that time, I didn't even know what a distortion plus looked like so it wasn't like i was sort of piggybacking on their design in fact i had a little uh a little power amp a mini eight pin mini dip um power chip to drive the headphones so it was considerably different this but nonetheless right i belabor the point so you know a tl071 might be a nice choice here i happen to use a 353 which was a dual because i needed two op amps but it has a similar sort of noise characteristic. So this is a little bit of an improvement over, over the 741. Um, in general terms, it has other nice improvements in that it has, um, besides the improved noise, it has a wider bandwidth and a higher slew rate, but those are not major issues for this particular application. So the interesting thing here is what I did with the clipper diodes that create the distortion. So instead of just having the signal coming across the diodes, I sort of buffered that drastic change in impedance from the diodes with the resistor. So this is not exactly what I did. Uh, this is just a modification of the preceding circuit. It's close enough, though, to sort of um, illustrate the point. So what ends up happening is by taking the load across the diodes and an extra resistor, that sudden change in clipping is softened. You get a, a, let's say, a more rounder kind of looking waveform, which wouldn't have quite the sort of metallic biting edge. All right, if you want the metallic biting edge, use the other circuit. That's not what I was going after here. Some of the other components have to be altered along with this, but we can just take a look at what the transient response for this is, and uh, you can you can readily see what the what the uh, output differences. Okay. So here's our VN, right? And here's the V out. And you can see, you know, at first glance, you might think, oh, that's just a sine wave. No, it's not. Look at it. Right around here is where it's starting to deviate. Now, look at this edge right in here. And you can see this is really starting to bend over uh, much more so than the comparative sine wave right below it in green, the input. So this is producing some distortion. A fair amount of distortion. 
um, but not quite so as extreme as that right this is really starting to flat top all right right so we can come in here and uh, you know change you know those two things are both at 75 percent right so I can come in here and say well you know let's try 90 percent you know how nasty can we get here all right we can definitely start to flat top this thing all right the signal output's going to be a little bit bigger so it's a little hotter in that regard but the total you know harmonic result that you get is definitely softened you can almost see like a double break here like here's the sine wave here's where the diodes start to conduct but this angle right here is a function of that series resistor and then eventually it just gets so high that it's going to flat top just like the original circuit did right so I'm not saying that this distortion is going to be an entirely different kind of distortion it all depends on where you set this but it is a, a somewhat more subtle softer kind of form maybe you like it maybe you don't all right it's all a matter of aesthetics but you know as I said this is a nice little circuit to see all these little pieces that come together so we have you know our our normal uh, non-inverting series parallel feedback amplifier adjustable gain we have single supply biasing like I said I didn't show it here but uh, you would normally have uh, power supply bypass to reduce noise from the power supply coming in now the 9 volt battery that's not the worst thing in the world but you know a lot of people use uh, battery eliminators these little 9 volt DC sources you know you plug them in the wall and you know, very often those aren't the cleanest power sources so it's important that you have something like that all right um, in any case we've got the, the the caps to block the DC make sure that the uh, AC the excuse me the DC gain is unity we have our uh, clipping devices out here we have some filtering going on uh, interesting little device right okay you know what if you don't play guitar well maybe you know someone who does and now you can be the expert cool all righty next time who knows what we're going to look at because i haven't done that video yet Ooh. but i'm sure it'll be good so stay tuned and we'll see you then